I'm probably gonna be the one to get stuck on this yourself. Yeah. All right, well, I'm Tom. I'm a Titan Powers field engineer. All right, this will be the screen you'll be coming onto. If there's any alarms or anything, they'll show right under here. Tell you what they are. And if you got any of the breakers open, that's usually not a good sign. So you'll have an alarm with that. And just give us a call, let us know what's going on, and we'll try and walk you through it the yeah, best we can. Maybe that breaker open for a purpose. Yeah. So we're probably be, maybe be advised to try it or not be advised to try it. It depends on what the alarms are telling you, and give us a call, and we'll advise you from there. And then to get into your menu, press the select button. Okay, down. The monitor down. mimic is where we just were. The walk-in display, that's part of the startup procedures. I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. When you go to start it up, you'll have, you'll have the DC voltage come up to about 90%. You'll have the input amps and the output volts come up. And that's what it's supposed to do. Although you'll hear it ramp up, don't let it scare you. Then your status reports, you got your exit present status, which just your input, output volts, snaps. Then you got your event history, which will let you go through all of the activities that it's had. Event history is always a good one. What's that? Event history. Yeah, that just uh, shows you everything that it's ever done. Or, in other words, nothing happened yet. Well, it's you just gotta scroll through and it tells you step by step about what happened. Uh, history status, pretty much the same thing. System status, same thing as present status. System configuration, we don't ever mess with that, so you'll never have to worry about that. Limit settings. Same thing, we don't mess with them. So it's startup procedures. Startup procedures, that goes through on how to start it up if you've had a shutdown on it. First thing it'll tell you to do is uh, close the input breaker, then go through your walk-in screen, then you'll see everything come up. And other than that, just kind of follow as it goes. And there's a lot of, not really a lot of steps, but enough that if you just follow it, you'll be all right. Shut down procedures, same thing, just follow it, you'll be all right. Battery time, that'll tell us how much, how much time you'll have until you got a low voltage shutdown when you're on battery. Meter calibration, this goes through the calibrating bolts and amps. Battery equalized, pretty much. We don't ever worry about that anymore. Um, it gives it a, a much higher charge to just kind of yeah. just kind of spike it. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then back to your main screen, and you got your put volts and currents, your output volt or your output current, output volts, your battery voltage and current, and. That's pretty much it with this guy. Yeah, it is a little out of whack there. Uh, 204. Oh, the output? Yeah, they got yeah. a wind balance. Yeah. We're not worried about that a little bit. Not that much out of it. Yeah, it's not that far. Uh, has anybody got any questions on this? Yeah, that was pretty simple. Yeah. The breakers are all and cut out this, and the battery are all labeled. Yeah. What about the filters down here? Um, um, yes. They should be replaced as needed. Uh, we recommend about once a month. And to get to them, all they got is the two screws Just on each open side. Them up and put them in. Yep. Right? Yeah. That kind of tilts yeah, out. They've got the two screws, and it'll just kind of fold out about yay far or so. Just slide them out. Only use fiberglass filters, not depleted. Are they spec in here? They should be, but just be standard fiberglass with a cardboard frame. If you restrict too much air, 
then you can't suck the air into the UPS. And and it's not good. So we don't need a burn out the uh, hermetically sealed, you know, uh, fancy filter. Just the cheapy fiberglass ones. That's it. Yeah. You've got UPS input breaker back. Yeah, yep. output breaker. The battery, the battery breaker is that big gray right cabinet right there. And that's identical for both UPSs. Yeah. You'll see it the same size. And if you ever need to trip them or anything uh, for shutdown, just follow the procedures, but it's control enable, output trip, that'll trip that one. Control enable, battery trip, that'll trip your battery. Pretty, yeah, you just gotta press the control enable. And, and if you got an alarm and everything still seems to be working, Press the alarm reset button, and... Okay, that's the input side over there? Yeah. yeah. And if it's not anything major or something that clear, press the alarm reset, it'll go away. And they have an old shift button? Yeah, it's the EPL. I just curious. I saw a voltage adjust All right, now this is your maintenance bypass cabinet, and... Uh, Really the same menu as that, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. So this will let you also, this is what parallels your units and does all that kind of stuff. And with the voltage adjust here, you gotta press it in and then turn the outside. Yeah, but why would you wanna do that? That changes your, your inverter voltage so you can parallel. And I'll go through the. Uh, you shouldn't have to do that. You should. Yeah, that's kind of what I wonder. Yeah. The only time you do that, if you're looking at, if you're looking at the UPS voltage versus bypass, and they're a little bit different, so you don't want to, you don't want to take the UPS and parallel with by, commercial power unless it's within tolerance. A couple of voltage is different. That would be the only time you adjust that. Out here, that. though, commercial power probably varies quite a bit. Yeah, a little bit. And so that would be done if we're going to transfer this thing. Say we're coming in doing some maintenance and we need to shut off everything. Then we check that, transfer it, and then enable transfer through the static switch. And after that, we can transfer to maintenance bypass to do maintenance on this box if we need to. And we, we would probably operate that unless it was an emergency over the phone and we were telling you, look, you need to adjust that. Because yeah. it'll say, not okay to transfer, that might be the problem. The voltage are too far out of tolerance. Now, if you ever get an alarm on the UPS, this thing will beep. And to make it shut up, just torn off. You never want to press that unless there's flames coming out of here or I something. they were just options there. Horn off. Yeah, horn off will just make the beeper. really a button? Yeah. That you don't want to press unless there's flames coming out or something. And right for the limb, otherwise no check you're gonna lose your job. Yeah. <laughs> you press that. Yep. That's it, that's the fire button. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, we'll ship button. right here it tells you how your UPSs are doing. Both module one, module two are both online. And we're going through the UPSs right now. If you see it going through here, that's your bypass. That's not good. Right you see the OK to transfer? That means that the voltage and the frequency are OK to transfer to bypass. In other words, they're sync. They're sync. Now, if you see the module on, online, if, if we open the breaker on one of the UPSs, it will show off. So right now, you're running just on one UPS, and we're doing maintenance on one of them. Or it's offline because it failed for some reason, over temp. So, that would give you a status, and you go to UPS number two and look at what the alarm is and calls away and say, we got a problem. Yeah. So you can check status real quick there. Anytime either one of these systems are in alarm, it'll show up here as a as an, a system alarm. We'll tell you what the alarm is. You'll have to go back and look at the UPS. Right. And go go to go to the, 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 the uh, main screen there, the main menu. And it's similar to the UPS. The main menu is basically the same thing as that up your transfer procedures that that particular unit didn't have. This is where you would actually go if you ever needed a transfer to or from UPS or bypass. 
and we got the UPS lead in two degrees, which is, we're supposed to have the UPS in the lead. And you got your voltages here. So if you ever needed a transfer, you'd want your UPS voltage one to five. Are you talking lead on 60 cycle? Yeah. You'd want your UPS so voltage. Are you two degrees out? Are you two degrees out or are you right on the money there? Uh, we're two degrees. And that's what you recommend? Right? Yes. Some, somewhere between one and five. Which is all in here. Yeah. And pretty much you got your voltages. That's what you'll be adjusting to with, with this. You got your OK to transfer, we're on UPS. So if we ever needed to transfer to bypass, we'd look for all that stuff. And yeah. once you get those, then it's control enable bypass. Okay, during a power outage, that's where we're probably gonna have to get here and check the system, right? Everything's restored. Yeah. Just walk in and check the system. Yep. Yeah. yeah, if you ever need to check it after a power outage or something. This will be the screen we'll be leaving it on. That'll be everything right and, there. Yep, and you just look at that screen right there. Yeah, the alarm. Just look for the two on lines and look for any alarms over here. Those would be your system alarms, so as long as it's online, that screen's blank, you're good. 